like to start the meeting now, please? Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming to the Alliance for Better History 6 August community meeting. Start with introductions. My name is Morris Phillips. I'm president, land use chair, parliamentarian, and public safety chair of the Alliance, and I live upstairs. Uh, Susan, you want to introduce yourself? I'm Susan Bryan. I'm the treasurer at, of Lands for Better District 6 and videographer of the evening. Uh, Feliciano Beda, senior project manager with the Mission Economic Development Agency. Hi, Kevin Kuitaka. I'm coordinating the San Francisco Green Fence Program for a city agency that helps businesses uh, become more environmentally friendly. You all jump here for us. Senior Redditor, how do I do it? Yeah, Regine, Luis Quadro, Bird Davis, Public Affairs, we are at the 3016 Street Project. Scott Boscani, the cell phones, voicemails, tablets, anything that goes deep, uh, so we don't pick it up on the uh, uh, video. We appreciate it. And um, oh well. Uh, also, that we keep our conversations on the positive, and uh, we don't try to offer negative thoughts to our presenters tonight. And um, we try to avoid cross-talking and any side chatter. If you want to talk to somebody on, on the side, we ask you to go to the back of the room or outside in the hallway to do it. And tonight we have water on the side table if you want to get thirsty. And uh, we are a membership organization. Well, I don't have a membership form, but we are. And we have, we do a donation jar to help cover the cost of our, uh, there you go, sir. Uh, to pay the cost of our printing and other, and, uh, and other expenses. So, Susan, I hate asking you. Oh, oh, okay. Um, or can I auto do it? Okay, thanks. Please don't take any out. This is the ton of long, so I have to ask. Gotcha. So while Susan's doing that, I think everybody has a copy of the agenda. If you don't, there's copies up here. And um, we're going a little bit out of order. We're going to do 1990 Folsom first, and then 999 Folsom second. Uh, so, and then 72 hours third. And if, you, if there are any questions for the agenda? Yeah, I was asked to present by Michael Dolte. Michael Dolte. He's off sick tonight. We don't know who he is. Okay. Yeah. And he's an, uh, emailed our secretary um, that he would be coming when he's off sick. Okay. And our secretary is at the Giants game working, so we don't have a secretary tonight either. Uh, should it be, should I still present today, or should it? So it's on it. again? Um, I'm with the City of San Francisco and the Department of Environment. Thank you, Marvis. Uh, thank you to members of the Alliance uh, for a Better District 6. My name is Feliciano Veda. I'm a senior project manager with the Mission Economic Development Agency. And uh, we're here to talk about a project that we're working on in partnership with the Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Corporation. Um, 
talk to the uh, owners of this building here and uh, obviously a critical part of the Tenderloin community. Um, so they're proposing for uh, the northwest corner of 16th Street Folsom, 1990 Folsom. Uh, for those of you that are longtime residents of San Francisco, you may be familiar with that site uh, as the old uh, Kilpatrick's Bakery. Um, and, and up until 2008, it operated as a, as a distribution center for, um, for their successor, uh, uh, Grupo Bimbo, Bimbo Bakeries. And it served as a, uh, as a day old retail, uh, retail uh, uh, outlet for baked goods. And, and worked in conjunction with the main bakery across the street uh, on the south side of 16th Street, southwest corner of 16th Street, Folsom. Um, that building, that intersection, that, that building in particular has been vacant since 2008. Um, Mission Economic Development Agency and Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Corporation acquired that property last year uh, on, a, on an at-risk basis, meaning we, we, we came out of pocket with, um, with our, our funding to acquire um, what is a, an approximately uh, 29,000 square foot site. Um, so tonight, I'm gonna kind of just give you a little bit of background about who we are. Um, you can ignore the small groups, I think we can we, what, what I'd like to propose is, is, um, is if you have any questions, feel free to ask and interject during the presentation. Happy to, happy to take questions throughout the presentation. And, um, and so I want to share with you, um, obviously, context behind our project, why we're doing what we're doing, um, who the team is that, put, uh, that, that, is, uh, that is behind this project, what our vision is, the development concept, the design concept, and, uh, and again, the small group will just we'll close after we, we go through the vision and concept. So um, as, most of, as, as most of you know, um, the Mission District has and District, District 9 and District 6 uh, have borne uh, a significant amount of, uh, of the brunt of the, the impacts of um, changing demographics in our communities. And, uh, and so within the mission, in District 9 in particular, um, there, there has been over the last 18 years a, an acute reaction and sensitivity to uh, the lack of development of affordability and the, the decreasing affordability uh, of, of housing stock in the mission. Uh, since 2000, it's been estimated uh, that over 8,000 Latino families have been displaced as a consequence of the changing economics in the neighborhood. Uh, to give you a quick bit of background, uh, right now, uh, the, the, average, uh, the average household income in District 9 and in the mission in particular is right around thirty-four or $36,000 a year. And it's a household income um, to, uh, to, to lease a one-bedroom apartment in the Mission, you're looking at on average at between thirty-one and thirty-two hundred dollars a month. And so, if you do the math right out of the shoot, um, it's it, it, that tells you a lot about the challenges that that, um, that the communities within the Mission face. And and so, as a consequence of that pressure, um, a, a number of community organizations co have, uh, have coalesced over the last few years. Um, really seek to advocate for direction of, of city resources and of public resources and community resources to, to solve the problem. And, uh, and so 1990 Folsom is, is really um, is, is the latest uh, response to that. One of the biggest challenges that we had in the mission is that in the middle of all of the advocacy work that was, that was um, taking place, uh, we were we, we were in, in a period where we didn't necessarily have the technical capacity to undertake the development and delivery of affordable housing in in uh, in the community. And so, Mission Economic Development Agency, my organization, uh, in 2013 founded our community real estate team, and we set about to partner with a number of different peer organizations like Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Corporation, uh, Chinatown Community Development Corporation. Bridge housing to um, to bolster our capacity to uh, to solve for that lack of technical ability and to solve the problem uh, of decreasing affordability uh, that that, uh, that our residents and our families were being presented with. Um, so, 
The culmination, so one of the other culminations of our political world, the political organizing that took place in the mission was the passage of Proposition A in November of 2015. A lot of you were part of that, um, that campaign to advocate for funding for more affordable housing. And as part of that, uh, that proposition, $50 million of that bond that was approved by San Francisco voters was set aside specifically for development in the mission. And, uh, and, and with the, with the charge um, from residents to buy now, build now, meaning folks wanted to just solve the problem as quickly as they could. And so, so our project really came about as a consequence of that. We went and bought our property with, um, with funds from our organization and, and submitted, uh, submitted the project uh, as a candidate for funding under a notice of funding availability that was released by the city uh, of the city's, uh, mayor, the mayor's office of, of housing and community development in April of last year. In September, uh, we were uh, we were uh, notified that we were one of the successful respondents, and so we've been working quite closely with the mayor's office of housing uh, and community development to bring this project to fruition since then. Um, so, uh, to give you a quick bit of background about our team. We we have we we, we again have two different components to our development team. Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Corporation, which brings all of its experience serving um, the communities here in the Tenderloin, as well as in Soma and really throughout the city of San Francisco, and Mission Economic Development Agency. So a quick bit of background about us. We're, about, we're a 44-year-old organization uh, that's, that, uh, that was founded specifically to, um, to uh, uh, help uh, mission residents access opportunity through workforce development programs, job training programs, uh, asset building programs, housing counseling, rental counseling. So we, we form primarily as a direct service provider. And, and so our, our, again, our entree into, um, into the, the real estate world really came as a consequence of one-on-one um, -on -one interactions with our clients, with the community members that we serve. Uh, and, and so that really was, so, so those conversations, the urgency of the need was what drove us to, um, to get into, um, into this work and to, and to really tackle this by, by not, just, not just advocating, but by doing. Um, and, and so, uh, so our, our team is comprised of TNDC, META, and then uh, our architecture team, design team, unfortunately aren't here with me today. Uh, Letty made and Stacy Architects uh, last year. Uh, they were, um, they were, were awarded uh, the, the American Institute Architect of Architects Firm of the Year Award nationally. So they're, they're a, a nationally prominent firm whose primary, uh, primary uh, uh, service areas focus on nonprofit organizations, educational organizations, and, and affordable housing. Uh, and they're really innovating in terms of, of that work. And, uh, and then TNDC uh, is, is going to be providing property management for the project. And then we've got two, um, we're gonna have at the ground level, uh, community partners that we have yet to select that will be providing affordable childcare services for kids between the ages of zero to five. Uh, and um, an affordable PDR art space, and, and, and there's a there's a method behind that madness, and we'll I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go further. Um, so, to give you an idea of, uh, of what we're working on and, and, and where our focus is right now uh, at present, uh, we um, Meta is presently developing uh, four projects within the mission uh, with uh, with unit counts of, of um, north of 100 uh, units uh, each. 1296 Shotwell, which is uh, right, right around just shy of 100 units. Uh, it's that is a that is an affordable senior project. Um, 2060 Folsom, which is literally a half a block south of, of our site, and that is going to be an approximately 134 unit family housing. 20% or rather 30% of the units in that project are going to be set aside for uh, formerly homeless transition age youth. Um, in, in the mission, one of the um, one of the needs that uh, that has been identified by community uh, has been the need for for TAY housing, uh, primarily amongst um, uh, Latino, Latina, LGBTQ communities uh, that are undocumented. So it's a very very vulnerable population. 1990 Folsom, our project, which is a proposed a 143 unit affordable housing project, which will also include 20 percent of the units as, as set aside for formerly homeless families. In 681 Florida, which is uh, which is, adjoins TNDC's property at Mosaica between uh, 18th and 19th streets uh, along uh, along Bryant, and 
681 Florida is, uh, is at the site of the old cell space. And for those of you that may be familiar with that, uh, it was a, um, a community gathering point for multiple communities for, for many, many years. Uh, and uh, and, and I, as I think many of you may be familiar, it was a subject of a very, very bruising, um, bruising fight uh, when the, the, uh, the developer of market rate housing on that site um, just, uh, I, I, I'll reserve comment, just say that it uh, could have been a little bit more conversation at the outset, um, but, uh, but be that as it may, as a consequence of community negotiation, uh, the developer did set aside a portion of that uh, property as a dedicated site for affordable housing at 681 Florida is the result of that. So this map also gives us a, a quick overview of, of kind of how we're thinking about, uh, about our projects. These are all in very, very uh, transit-rich uh, locations. 1990 Folsom and 2060 Folsom uh, are both within three blocks of the 16th Street BART, uh, BART station, and they both adjoin the 22 and the 33 uh, Fillmore line, 33, um, or I'm sorry, the, the, the 55 um, being uh, the interim uh, uh, muni service that's going out to Mission Bay uh, until uh, the 22 is electrified all the way out there connecting up and down 16th Street. Uh, and then along, uh, and then we've got um, bus service along the, uh, the 12th Folsom and uh, multiple lines running down Mission Street. Uh, so this, is, this has a very, very high walk score and, and it made the site a very, for us, a very, very interesting site as, um, as a potential site for affordable housing. Um, so we get a little bit of background that I shared with you about um, about the Mission Economic Development Agency. Um, we started our, our community real estate team in 2013, but our development experience slightly predates that with the acquisition and rehabilitation of what is now Plaza Adelante. Our office is at 2301 uh, Mission Street. It's a fairly complex undertaking. Um, utilizing a, a, a layer of new market tax credit financing to, um, to undertake that and ha providing uh, a home for a number of different nonprofit organizations that provide direct community services to, um, to residents in the mission and throughout San Francisco. TNBC, as I think most of you know, um, has a 35-year track record of hi uh, history here in, in the Tenderloin, um, and it is one of the leading organizations uh, in shaping um, the affordable housing landscape here uh, in the city as well as, in the, as, well as nationally, really. Um, pres at present, they have um, over 3,000 units in their portfolio, including this building, Mosaica, and quite a few other projects here in, um, in District 6, and, um, and so, um, and so within that portfolio, they have over 200,000 square feet of commercial space at the ground floor, um, through, uh, again, throughout their entire portfolio. So LMS Architects, as I shared with you, Letty Madam Stacy, um, this has been a, a leader in, in, uh, in, in affordable housing design, and, uh, and so they have a, a broad uh, portfolio of experience, including the Rene Canis-Cazanave project, 474 uh, in Toma, and family house um, and so we're, we're, we're really excited to have them um, work with us to shape this this project so give you a quick bit of um, bit of context and, um, and and talk quite frankly about about um, the challenges that we have in the mission and the challenges that we have as a city in terms of, of um, really thinking about um, ongoing affordability and ongoing job creation so as we, as we uh, shared with you, this site used to be a distribution center and it's presently zoned production, distribution, and repair 1G, so PDR 1G. Uh, and, and, and so that speaks to the heart of some of the tough decisions that we have to make as a city. Uh, how do we balance job creation, good, good, good solid working class jobs with the need for housing for those same folks? For, for working class residents that, um, that comprise the bulk of our, of our workforce, whether, uh, whether they're in the service industry, retail, um, back of house, uh, uh, or PDR. Uh, and, and so when we looked at the site, we made the decision to, uh, to, to acquire it um, based on a commitment that we made to the communities that, that, we, um, that, that we have been working with. And that is, we, we, um, we decided that we were going to, uh, to, to solve, you know, try to feed two birds with one cracker. 
Um, and, and that is we what we committed to replacing the PDR space on the ground floor, or, or the existing PDR space on a, on a minimum one for one basis, uh, and further ensuring that, that we would also commit to offering that space at affordable lease rates uh, in perpetuity, so through the life of the building. Uh, meaning that, that prospective users would uh, would would be afforded um, some some security and uh, and, and air 